Math and Beats, video time. We're going to talk about neighborhoods of real numbers. All right, what's a neighborhood? Don't look down there yet. Neighborhood of, say, a number X, or sometimes, as we say, an epsilon neighborhood of X. What is it? Well, let's let X be a real number. And let's let epsilon be a positive real number. Then we say that a neighborhood of x or an epsilon neighborhood of x is a set which has the following form. And that is this set right here, a collection of values. Let's call that collection of values some y's which is a collection of real number y's, so that the magnitude x minus y is less than epsilon. So we're going to have to discuss what that means conceptually, but that's how we define it. And over on the left here, what I'm boxing in, this is our notation, big N of x and a semicolon epsilon. So what is that saying? It's some neighborhood, as we say, hence the N, which is the set of values which we've just defined. But not only does it depend on what X is, but it also depends on what epsilon is. Now, as we're going to see in a moment, we often refer to the number epsilon in this context as the radius of the neighborhood. So let's dissect this a little bit more. For the neighborhood of x, when we write this, like I just said, it depends on both x and epsilon. And then we get a collection of real number y's so that the magnitude and the difference between x and y is smaller than epsilon. We also note that this magnitude could be zero. Because epsilon is assumed to be positive, then if magnitude of x minus y was zero, then it's still less than some positive number, epsilon. So you say, okay, that's great. But really, what is it? What are we trying to describe here? Well, to get us a better idea about what this neighborhood is, Let's just go and solve this inequality. In other words, we're going to rewrite it, and then we're going to isolate the y in the compound inequality so that we really see what's the upper bound on this collection of y's and what's the lower bound. So here you go. Here's the statement that shows solving again. Yeah, yeah. Start with the inequality, which is necessary. Magnitude x minus y less than epsilon. Well, that's equivalent to writing this compound inequality right there, minus epsilon less than x minus y, less than epsilon. But now, if we just subtract the x from all parts of the compound inequality, minus x minus x minus x, then we get the result right here. Negative y is left in the middle, and negative epsilon minus x on the left, epsilon minus y on the right. And then finally, multiplying everything through by negative 1 results in this compound inequality right there, which is just the same as saying that y is trapped between x plus epsilon and x minus epsilon. Hence, this collection, this neighborhood that we're defining here, the neighborhood of x with a radius of epsilon, is really just this open interval of real numbers all these values of y between x minus epsilon and x plus epsilon. To draw a little picture to help us visualize here, okay, what we're saying is here's some collection of values, right? This interval, 
what's the interval go between? It goes all the way from the left, x minus epsilon, and to the right, x plus epsilon. Now you think, if x is right here in the middle, then if I move to the right or the left, the same distance, epsilon, it essentially results in this collection that we're looking for. So that's why we also refer to it as a epsilon neighborhood of x because here's x and I just go out epsilon units to the left and right to form a symmetric open interval around the x. And the collection of all those things we call the neighborhood or the epsilon neighborhood and it's just a bunch of collection of real numbers column wise or something. So we like these uh, epsilon neighborhoods as we're going to see the motivation is to formally define limits and to prove what certain limits are. And for this, we need neighborhoods. Now, here's an example. Determine the neighborhood of X for X is 2 and epsilon is 3. So hopefully this won't be too crazy. We'll just use what we just saw right above. All right, what do we get? For these values of x and epsilon, we get that the neighborhood of x with a radius of epsilon is, well, by definition, it's this collection here. Bunch of real numbers such that 2 minus y is less than 3. So that stuff right there, remember, that's the x minus y in magnitude less than epsilon. So we're just replacing the x and the epsilon in our formula in the set. And then we go ahead and rewrite it like we did uh, a moment ago, just using the equivalent compound inequality and isolating the y. So we rewrite the compound inequality, subtract two both sides of the inequality, all sides should I say, and then negate everything in the inequality, which of course uh, reverses the signs, the symbols, the inequality symbols, and we get the collection of all these real numbers that are between negative 1 and 5. Or in other words, the open interval, negative 1 to 5. Now, again, here's x is 2. Right? If I move to the right 3 units, which is our epsilon, where will I be? I'll be at 5. If I move 3 units to the left another epsilon units, then where will I be? At negative 1. Hence, this is just the formal way of saying start at some x, some real number, and move to the left, the same units you move to the right, In the interval that you get, that open interval, is the neighborhood of x and epsilon. So... For this particular one, we got the interval negative 1 to 5 open. And there you go. There is a quick example and definition of what a neighborhood is. In the next video, we will look at what is called deleted neighborhoods, which is slightly different. That's it for the video. Short beat and then deleted neighborhoods.